Hello everyone, it's Jamal Thomas. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. So in my neck of the woods, Virginia, uh, maybe a couple of hours away, still in Virginia, near D.C., a 70-year-old Muslim woman was murdered. Um, now, they're saying it's not a hate crime. They're investigating it as if it's not a hate crime. It looks like a hate crime. It looks like a hate crime. Let's look at the rag, Washington Post. Death of Virginia teen whose police say was assaulted and disappeared after leaving a mosque in Sterling area hasn't, isn't being investigated as a hate crime, authorities said Monday. On Sunday, police found the girl's remains. A 22-year-old man has been charged with the murder in connection with the case. The mosque, the al Dulles Area Muslim Society, and Sterling and relatives identified the girl as 70-year-old Nabram Hassan of Reston. Fairfax County, come on. Fairfax County Police identified the man charged with the murder in her death as Darwin Martinez Torres of Sterling. On Monday, they did not release an explanation as to why they weren't investigating the murder. It's a hate crime. According to accounts from police and mosque officials, a group of four teens were walking back from breakfast at IHOP early Sunday when they were confronted by a motorist. All but one of the teens ran to the mosque where the group reported the girl had been left behind, according to Deputy Kalabonowski, a spokeswoman for the Lorden County Sheriff's Office. Immediately thereafter, the Damas personnel notified Lorden County and Fairfax County authorities, who were immediately began to extensive search to locate the missing girl, the mosque said in a statement. Lorden and Fairfax police jointly conducted an hour-long search around Drainsman Road, Okay, this is getting into the weeds. I'm looking for the part about why this is not a hate crime. The girl's mother said detectives told her that Navarro was struck with a metal bat. I can't think of a worse instance to occur in the loss of 17-year-old father on Father's Day. As a father of a 17-year-old himself, Lord and County Sheriff Michael Chapman said, I'm, I gotta be honest, I'm not understanding why this is not a hate crime. I mean, anytime a Muslim commits a crime, it was done by Allah. They were pushed by their religion to commit a crime. They couldn't just commit a crime to be committed a crime. This woman is walking home with her friends. Somebody gets out the car pissed off. Her friends run and leaves her. And she he beats her with a metal bat. Yeah, here it is. Police said Monday they aren't investigating the death as a hate crime, but the issue was on minds of many Muslims. On Sunday, last month, two men in Portland train were stabbed and killed after intervening to protect a girl who had been harassed by anti-Muslim threats, according to authorities. Sunday night, a van struck a crowd of pedestrians, including worshippers, leaving a pair of mosques in London. Witness that the pedestrians were struck as they departed late night prayers. So they're trying to make this point that, look, man, people are scared. They're terrified. Is this a situation where you have this kind of anti-Muslim sentiment that's bubbling up? That's attacking these people. I don't think that's a crazy thing to ask. Now, is it possible that the guy was just pissed off and just beat him with a baseball bat to be beating her with a baseball bat? I suppose anything is possible. Well, why her? Right? Why her? Why? Why the 17-year-old? I don't understand why this particular 17-year-old. What distinguishing characteristics did you decide to do this by? Meaning, was she wearing something that gave across this idea that she was a Muslim? And was it possible that that was a distinguishing characteristic in the man getting off his motorcycle, whatever, to attack her? Those are fair questions. Why didn't he attack anybody else? And is it the case that nobody else was on the street? These were the only people that were on the street. I'm skeptical about not treating this as a hate crime, but but again, it's possible it wasn't a hate crime. It's very possible that the guy just willy-nilly decide, I want to bash the head of the first person I see. That's possible. That's absolutely possible. I would say... There's probably nothing more tragic 
than a family or a mother or a husband losing their child. It's inherent. It's almost like it's ingrained with this belief that your child would exceed you. When they don't, it burns with that. You raise that kid. You change the kid's diapers. You were there to help them ride their bicycle. All these things, all these things that make up a life, all these entanglements, these hardcore entanglements that are created by you and the person who you're, I guess, nursing upward. And that person's chipped off. And not for any particular reason. They didn't do anything wrong. They weren't doing anything bad. They weren't bad people. Nothing like that. Somebody else took it upon themselves to end that person's existence. And whether or not it was for religion or not, it matters, I would argue, it matters. But ultimately, it snuffed out somebody's life. I would imagine that family is dealing with massive amounts of pain. I'm also... Oh man, I, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm being punitive. And that's maybe the problem. Maybe I want to be punitive. That's my bias. My bias is people. I don't like people being snuffed out for no reason. If... A hate crime is associated with more charges. It's possible that I'm being biased, thinking to myself, oh, I want him to hurt. I want him to hurt. I want him to be in a lot of pain. Here's one catch. Everyone who's functioning in a society is functioning within web. Meaning who you are is not completely distinct from the society itself. You are raised with particular parents who have particular beliefs those particular beliefs rub off on you. You go out into the world and you bump into other people. Each person you bump into leaves some something of themselves onto you. Where you begin and end and what the society begins and ends is always a sketchy pro prospect. There's no such thing as you having complete free will. You are always influenced by the people around you. What I'm getting at is to some degree, the society that produced somebody who would do something like that is also to blame, not just the individual. Meaning, as much as I dislike that person that's putting him out of as much as I greatly despise that person for ending the life of somebody else, I have to acknowledge that the society itself created that person. We created that person. And every law, policy, regulation, and every way that we would talk about a particular group in every way we would cast a particular demographic in a particular light the way we would cast ourselves in certain light it's all of these things these ideas these preconceived notions even if you want to get into this idea of economics all of these things lends itself into creating that particular person who killed that particular child You can't solve this problem at the level of the model. There's no, how are you going to change how people think? How are you going to change how people pass those things off to their offspring? I don't. That's not easy. That's not an easy question. Meaning, your society has created bad and nasty things. And I'm, this is I'm putting this in kind of kind of comic book terms, but I'm making this in the sense of trying to get across. This is ghastly. This is ghastly. It's just ghastly behavior. And ultimately, all of us combined. I know it's like, it's easy to say that person did X. But that person is not functioning with full agency. That person is not completely detached from the, the society itself. It helps the society to say that guy did it. But that society never wants to take the blame for creating that person. That's all I'm saying. You change that person by changing the society that person was raised in. So, i leave it at that. Alright guys, if you enjoy the content, feel free to share, like, subscribe, and you can always support the work through Patreon.